Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the Marvels because apparently it seems like Disney's a little bit worried, a little bit worried about the Marvels. Oh, I'm sure they're quite a bit worried about the Marvels. Yeah, this one is not tracking to do very well. In fact, it's tracking to be one of, if not the lowest opening for an MCU movie. It's pretty bad. Uh, I think they were saying less than 200 million domestic. Now that is coming from Box Office Pro. We don't know how accurate that is, but yeah, that's not good. That is not good for a Marvel movie. So so Disney has decided that like a week before it releases on no, what, November 10th. Yeah. So November what 3rd or whatever, they're going to put these uh, Marvel Studios legends. They do like a character deep dive on people, on different characters. They're putting one up for uh, uh, Carol Danvers, Kamala Khan, and Monica Rambeau ahead of the movie release because no one knows who the fuck they, they are. For the most part. Well, that, that, that's one of the biggest problems with them doing things the way they're doing them right now is they just assume that everybody is watching the Disney Plus shows. If you, if you don't watch the Disney Plus shows, you don't know who the other two women are, right? Mm -hmm. And and that was kind of one of the things that hurt, I think, uh, Doctor Strange was because if you didn't watch WandaVision, you had no idea what, what the was heck, going on. What yeah. was going on. So we're going to talk about this. They should be worried because uh, every time Kamala Khan shows up, uh, Marvel loses money. Pretty much, you yes. Know, they they cancel comics. They cancel video games. They like. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you like her. You're you're allowed to like this character, and I think the actress that plays her, she seems like a good kid. Mm -hmm. That being said, this character is not popular. No. She's not popular. No. And uh, this is like a a, a a theatrically released Disney Plus special is what this yeah. is. So let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. You get a woohoo if you do. Woohoo. Uh, go out to piratesandprincesses.net for more objective Disney, Marvel, Star Wars news. Uh, you wrote this this morning. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so tell me what is going on with this. Okay, so we'll talk about the box office numbers first of all. Uh, not looking good. The projections no. are this. They're thinking it's only going to be 50 to 75 million domestically for the opening. Yeah, which is significantly worse than the last worst movie. I mean, yeah. it's just like, it's not looking. Not and looking then good. completely for the whole run, they're expecting it to be 121 to 189 million domestically. Oh my now, God. They're going to counting on overseas in China. Thing is, I don't know if China is going to save them, uh, but their budget was, was originally thought to be like 130 million. It yeah. was 275 million. They would need to make 600 to 700 million to break even. Can you imagine spending almost $300 million on a Captain Marvel, uh, Ms. Marvel team up movie? They did. They did. Cause they thought, I mean, stupidly, arrogantly, Disney thought everything they did that had the Marvel or Star Wars brand slapped onto it was money in the bank. And now they're going to find out, I think the hard way that a lot of these projects are anti-money. And this should be, you know, doing fantastic because they don't have competition. No. They got the IMAX slot that they were going to be completely blocked out of after Dune 2 moved to next year, and they're getting China. But I don't think it's going to do that great. And then to, to try to offset this, they're not saying that I'm saying this, but it's really interesting timing. They're going to put up these uh, this new shorts or new series or whatever on their Marvel Studios Legends. They have different characters they put on it. All three of them are getting their own on, I think, releasing on November 3rd. So it's basically just like a encapsulating, like if you don't know who this character is or don't give a shit who this character is, fantastic. You can just watch this uh, abbreviated, encapsulated version right. of, uh, you know, previously on in the MCU, right. basically. So, and that's just it, because it's like nobody knows who these characters are, because, you know, Captain Marvel maybe, because, you know, they made a big point of having to see that film before Endgame. They made people think you did, and if she was an Endgame and all that. But, you know, Monica Rambeau, last you saw her in the movie, she was a kid. If you didn't watch WandaVision, you don't know who she is. Ms. Marvel was one of the lowest watched MCU movies or shows, I mean, and, no, and the games failed. Most people don't know who the hell that is. Yeah, this is just, I mean, look, again, everything that they did that was a huge mistake that almost destroyed Marvel Comics back from 2015 to 2017. They're doing it in the movies now. They're doing it with a lot more money. And they're going to lose a lot more money. And I think a lot of that was intentional. I think uh, that Disney was putting pressure on them back then to create all these new stand-in characters. It was get, just like, you know, the Star Wars sequels. And they're like, oh, yeah, we'll put them in the comics mm -hmm. first. And we'll then make these them are, stick. We'll make, it, we'll make them stick. That, that's the only thing that can explain why characters that do not sell 
get a chance and another chance and another chance and another chance. Well, I think a lot of it's because they're diverse and they're like, they're the agenda characters a lot of times and they want to make sure they push that to, you know, oh, look. I can't wait for the mighty agendas. Mighty agendas. Actually, I kind of watched that. Agendas assemble. Oh They've got but their then, own no, flag. It would, it They've got never, their own flag. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work because by the time it's done, they ought to be fighting each other over who was more important and more oppressed. Plot twist. So, so, that would be amazing. Not they, they just talk people to they just talk people into giving up. No, people they just, just, they yeah, just they give just up because they're so tired of listening to them. They just sit them down. They have a, a, a chat in the coffee shop about why they're wrong, why they're a bigot. Why they, well, I well, guess that they, doesn't work. They just, they just give up because they're just tired of their shit and walk away. That'd be funny. Like, hey, yeah, we were going to invade your planet, but you're a planet full of pussies. Well, you're a planet full of people we don't care. Yeah, well, nah, you're not worth the idea. <laughs> you're not worth it. You're not up, worth just it. Just blow it up. Just blow um, it up. <laughs> So yeah, so they're basically doing these. They're doing these three specials. Is that what we're calling them? I, I, I guess specials. Captain Marvel landed in the MCU the specials with her own film and was established as one of the most powerful heroes. Yet unveiled, originally a pilot named Carol Danvers, the captain gained her power when exposed to energy from the Tesseract. Legends retraces Captain Marvel's journey as she discovers her truth. Her truth. Repel, yeah, her truth. Repels an alien invasion and finally stands with the Avengers in their fight against Thanos. So you can watch her get her ass punched. Thanos flicked her like a booger. Yeah. You can, that, I mean, that that's just put truth. that on loop. But basically what they are are they're recaps of their movies and shows so you can watch their and then their full glory. Uh, all over again. Kamala Khan might be a teenager struggling with her average coming of age issues. Oh, for God's sake. But she also has to cope with a set of bizarre powers derived from an ancient artifact inherited from her strange grandmother. It's a lot of words. Legends unpacks Kamala's surprising journey as she goes from a young woman who dreams about hanging with the Avengers to a fledgling superhero who might actually get the chance, get a chance one day, or get the chance one day. Oh, it's okay. She'll be the leader of the X-Men in the MCU. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. So Don't it's all worry. Good. They'll put her in charge of the X Men. And Monica Rambeau, the least obnoxious. As a child, she, she called is. she called Captain Marvel Auntie Carol and helped the the burgeoning hero pick out her uniform's trademark colors. As an adult, Monica Rambeau became an agent of Sword, and for a time, she was trapped inside the powerful hex conjured by Wanda Maximoff in a show you had to pay to watch. But Rambeau's traumatic brush with Maximoff's magic altered the agent on a cellular level and imbued her with powers of her own. So just just to recap, Monica Rambeau, Monica Rambeau was Captain Marvel before Carol Danvers was Captain right. Marvel in the comics. And Monica Rambeau is one everybody complained about saying they should have been Captain Marvel and everybody had a shit yeah. fit about it. But later on, they're like, why didn't Monica Rambeau get to be Captain Marvel? And I was like, are you kidding me right now? Now, that being said, I actually I here's the here's the thing that's f- frustrating. I think the actress that plays Kamala Khan, I think the actress that plays Monica Rambeau, I think it was Tayona Paris. Mm-hmm. I think they're both good. That being said, they can only do with what they have to work with, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but and then they got then they're going to have to defer to Brie Larson as Carol Danvers, and even Brie Larson, I didn't hate her in every movie. I just I did not think she was right for Carol Danvers. No, you know, I think she became more sufferable after insufferable. After. Oh yeah, yeah. Then she just started talking. You know, as soon as she opened her mouth, this just indicates that they're they're desperately trying to get people on board with this, and I, th- I think they know. I think a lot of a lot of the problems with the MCU going forward is its interdependency on the Disney plus shows that fewer and fewer people are watching. Mm -hmm. I mean, Forbes called it out. This is Scott Mendelson who was a lot of people accused him of being a Disney apologist. This was last year. He said the low ratings for Ms. Marvel means a bigger problem for Disney plus. And it is a big problem. This is why they're not uh, canceling the comic books, even though they should, because they're like, well, we know we have a movie in the pipeline for these characters like three, four years down the well, road, so we got to keep them keep them active. They were releasing Ms. Marvel on ABC and stuff and Freeform yeah. trying to get people interested. It's not working. People aren't interested. They don't know who these characters are. They don't care who these characters are. The, the sad truth is if they had done in not Disney, but obviously, but Warner Brothers, if they had done an Arrowverse movie, I think there would be more interest in an Arrowverse movie than there is in Disney Plus. But it would have been the same thing. People, a lot of people didn't know who the characters were. That's true. You know, you know that's I true. just think that people don't know. Like when you have your major characters, like the major superheroes, like from Avengers, X-Men, whatever, people knew they go to the movies because like, oh, Spider-Man, no Spider-Man, I know Hulk, you know, I know Iron Man was kind of, you know, but Captain America and things like that. Oh, I know these characters. Yeah. Um, and they didn't get Black Widow movie because they, I think their logic was, well, a female-led film wouldn't do well. And people, you know, what were looking at her as a superhero because she didn't have powers. They didn't give Hawkeye one for the same reason. So let's just go double, triple down here. 
the female movie. Yeah, so we're going to take all the female characters that nobody cares about and and uh, put them all in one movie. Uh, and I think they honestly thought Ms. Marvel. I think they thought Ms. Marvel was going to be this big hit. Well, the difference you know? was that over the time, people knew who, who uh, you know, Black Widow was. Yeah. And, you know, gave a crap. Now, they, did, they didn't have time to warm up to these people at all. Yeah, Normies did not know who Black Widow was at all. They're like, okay, Hawkeye even was kind of like, I think people knew Hawkeye because he was in some of the cartoons. I mean, they had Black Widow sometimes in, like, the Avengers cartoons and stuff, but in uh, the Iron Man cartoon. But, uh, you know, Hawkeye was, like, in a couple of the video games. And even then, he was, like, really, like, a D-list character. So we went, you know? we went from that to, you know, Captain Marvel existed before. And Monica Rambeau clearly did before. Now we got Ms. Marvel. They keep trying to make stick. It's a relatively new character. And they're trying to, like, anchor everything around her. I think I think the original plan, This is this is my opinion. I think the original plan was to make... Captain Marvel and these characters, Ms. Marvel, Captain Marvel, uh, Captain Marvel Light, a <laughs> photon, where the hell they're calling her now. They were going to make them the face of the Marvel Universe. And there'd probably even be some line in there because, you know, they, they base the Avengers on her in the MCU, right? That was where they got the name for the Avengers Initiative was mm-hmm. from, from her. Uh, they retcon that. And they totally would be like, oh, yeah, it's the Marvel Universe. This is the, you know, 616 is the Marvel Universe because that's where the Marvels right. live. Mm-hmm. You know, they're the only Marvels in the, in, in the whole, all the multiverse. And they live in that one. So we're going to call this one the Marvel Universe. Right. Ah, ha, ha, yeah. ha, ha. Oh, suck it, man, baby. Suck it, man, baby. Stick it to the chuds. What makes it Marvel is her. That's what that's makes right. it Marvel. Yeah, I can totally. Keep, we need a hero. I could totally see them doing it. I could totally see them doing that and being like, yeah, it's the Marvel Universe because of Captain Marvel. I know. I just, the whole thing is just stupid. But I think they're going to get their asses handed to them at the box office. Because oh, yeah. in America, we already know that that doesn't look good. Of course, you know, these projections could be wrong. They could be, you know, much higher. They could also go lower, which we've seen. Um, I don't know. It, it's it going to go to China. I don't know how this is going to fly in China. Oh, yeah. A, a, a superhero movie led by three women. Uh, two of which are not white. I'm sure it's going to go over great. Yeah, I'm sure it's going <laughs> to go over just fan. It's going to be just fine. I know. So they're not. They're really worried, and I can understand why. But they must be getting like, oh, it's because no one knows who they are. So a week before the movie comes no. out, let's we'll put out <laughs> these shorts on Disney Plus. That you have to be a subscriber. Once again, you have to be a subscriber to Disney Plus to watch. For the recap, to know who the hell these people are. The the problem is everybody knows who they are, and they don't care. That is the problem. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows who these characters are and they're actively staying away because they don't care. They just don't care. Pretty much. So we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.